Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's open forum. Uh, we're going to get started right now uh, with Steve Dahlia. Steve, um, thank you very much for coming in. Much, Steve, we're going to show you how to incorporate, how to incorporate and everything else that has everything to do with that. that. But, uh, Steve, I'll let you All take right, Steve, over. I'll let you take over. All right. Thanks so much, Ryan. Good morning, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, cover this important topic to you today. So I'm going to click. I'm not really a Google Meet guy, but I'm going to click present now. I think I can fire something up here right let me just see how do i do this uh, where is my tab oh i don't want a chrome tab i want a window that's what i want now, let me do this let me open it here and then let me come back to my google meet and maybe that window is open now ba -ba -ba. Let's see. I'm looking for my PowerPoint window in this Google Meet. Any uh, any tips, Ryan? At the bottom, it says uh, it's got a, a, a present now button. Yeah, I hit that, and it's showing me the things that are available on my screen but i don't see the window select, uh, you can select the desktop select your desktop i'm sorry it's 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 select desktop. i'm sorry i'm just not understanding what that gentleman's trying here, to help here, I'll, I'll tell you here, I'll, I'll tell so you. at the top right now i have chrome tab window, 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 window entire screen i can put you when i want right and I'm clicking. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate it. All right. So let's see if I can get into it. Oh, okay. So it's in that window. Let's see if I can put it in present mode. Can I do that? Let's see. Okay. Are you looking at a screen that says Agent Incorporations and Corporation 101 at the top? Yeah, it, it's not in present mode, but that's fine. Ah, uh, okay. Or, or maybe click slideshow up top. Okay, I'm in a different window here. Let me go back to. And I'm sorry, what did you say, Ryan? Go to what? maybe slideshow up top however you normally get it into a slideshow yeah i'm in it on my laptop it's just not showing in here so let's just see i'm going to stop the share and i'm going to come back and try to do it this way All right, if this doesn't work, I'm going to uh, just do it in non-presentation mode. All right, so that's the problem. Okay, I, I know what the problem is that I can't get it into present mode here, but um, you guys are okay with it. I'm going to start running through it. Sure. sure. Now, let me ask you this. When I do this, did the screen advance? No, you have to go down that left side. There you go. Okay. All right, then I'll just present from here. Okay, cool. All right, sorry about that. So. Um, Today's class in Corporation 101, why should you consider incorporating? There's my contact information on the bottom middle of the screen. I'll present it again at the end if anybody wants to get in touch with me to ask any follow-up questions. Let me walk through how we're going to proceed through today. It takes about 45 minutes. I'll cut it a little short because of that false start we had there. Uh, what does forming a legal entity mean? What does it mean specifically to you as a real estate professional? How does the process work and who are some of the third parties that you've got to integrate with, like the Division of Corporations, Secretary of State, DBPR, the IRS, 
updating your records with your broker and uh, banking institutions. We're going to cover some of the very important DBPR do's and don'ts. Anybody can incorporate any business, but because we're talking about Florida realtor licenses, there are some specific rules and we'll get into what that is. Uh, and then we'll talk about what some of the critical next steps are to do after you've incorporated to make sure you enjoy all of the benefits that we're going to talk about today. So first of all, let's talk about what is incorporating or forming an LLC mean. It's designed to be a separate, and that word is bolded for a reason, and we'll get into that uh, in, in a couple of minutes, to, but designed to be a separate legal entity having its own privileges and liabilities distinct, again, or separate from its owners. It can do certain things. It can enter into agreements and contracts. It can incur and pay debts. It can sue or be sued, and it's going to be held responsible for its actions separate from the owner. So this whole idea of separating assets, personal and business assets, is a key component of why realtors should think about incorporating. So when you think about incorporating, it's probably important to understand what the appropriate business structure is. So if you're here today and you're not incorporated, chances are probably 100% that you're operating as a sole proprietor. So you're an individual, you own a business alone, that's your real estate business, and not as a separate legal entity. As such, you have no legal protection because your personal and business assets are com combined under one umbrella. So what are your options then? So your options, uh, I had a couple of screen builds here, but I just uh, you know presented all in one shot here. So your options are, you basically have two options as a Florida realtor. You can be a corporation or you can be an LLC. When a Florida realtor incorporates, uh, we, I'm, I'm licensed also, I'm not, act, I'm not uh, practicing now, but we are considered professionals, right? We have to get licensed. So when we incorporate, we become a professional corporation. Uh, and that's where we get the designation PA from. But it's just a corporation, but it has professional designation. Uh, or you can be an LLC. So let's talk about this PA or this corporation status. When a PA or a corporation is first formed, it becomes what we call a C corporation. Now, a C corporation is very good for asset protections. You're going to be able to separate your personal and your business assets. But from a tax standpoint, it's not too advantageous for us because we would get hit with something called double taxation. And what that means is, you're a corporation, so corporations right now are paying a 21% corporate tax. So you would pay that first, and then as you take money to live on, you're going to pay personal income tax on that again. So there goes the double taxation. But don't worry, because we have a way to alleviate that double taxation. Most of you have probably heard about this thing called an S corporation. Now, an S corporation. A lot of people get confused. They think it's a physical corporation. Like, What's the difference between an S-Corp and an LLC? An S-Corp is merely the way you tell the IRS you want your corporate entity to be taxed. So when you tell the IRS, which is part of our handling the, the process for you, when we tell the IRS you want your new PA to be incorporated as a uh, taxed as an S-Corporation, you no longer pay that 21% corporate tax. Now, all of your income flows through to you personally, which is where we come up with that term, uh, corporation with flow through tax treatment. So let's just say I made $100,000. So before I would have had paid $21,000 in corporate income tax. Now I don't pay that. The whole 100,000 flows through to me personally, and I pay tax on it at one time. And I'll show you how we even drive that tax obligation down even further. So that's a corporation. It's a professional corporation. It's a PA. That's all it is. It's a corporation. But because realtors are special professionals, they get to use the, the PA designation. Uh, then there's an LLC. Now, an LLC is actually a bit of a hybrid between what we talked about on the last screen, the sole proprietorship and a corporation. But the bottom line is, you can have an LLC and still tell the IRS 
you want that LLC to be taxed as an S corporation. So again, an S corporation is not a physical entity. It's just the way you tell the IRS you want to be taxed. So both a PA or an LLC can elect to be taxed as an S corporation. <coughs> Excuse me. So the biggest question I get is, well, which is better? Well, let's take a look at what they look like side by side. And you'll notice they're more similar than they are different. The only difference on this screen is that a PA, it's a corporation, and corporations are supposed to have an annual meeting every year, and somebody is supposed to keep minutes of what occurred at that meeting. Now, one of the DBPR rules we'll talk about in a little while is you can have a corporate entity, but you must be the one and only sole owner of it forever. So this means you kind of have to have a meeting with yourself every year and keep minutes of what occurred at that meeting. So two points on that. Number one, you don't need to send those minutes to anybody. You'll get scam mail after you incorporate that says, hey, pay this, pay that. Don't pay anything. One of those scam pieces of mail is, hey, we'll file your annual re annual meeting minutes for you. Uh, pay us $150. You don't have to do it because you don't have to submit them to anybody. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is you're having a meeting with yourself and keeping uh, minutes of what occurred at it. The good news is you're probably doing that anyway when you sit down at the end of the quarter, end of the year, or write out your business plan. So there's no physical requirement for you to submit them to anybody, but just write out your business plan, sign it, date it, put it in your file, and you're done. So um, with this being said, there is no entity that's better than the other. PA and LLC, they're both a million times better than continuing as a sole proprietor. But I can tell you this, in my business, I've been doing this for 10 years now. I've incorporated about 3,500 Florida agents. For me, my math is about 99.5% of my clients choose the PA, the rest choose the LLC. Why so many PAs? Well, I told you that only a, a handful of professionals get to use the PA designation. And with regard to realtors, with regard to the PA in Florida, only doctors, lawyers, accountants, and architects, in addition to realtors, can have the PA. So realtors, and it's a little less expensive, you'll see at the end. So realtors like to save money, and they want to be put in that group of those other professionals. They feel it's just a little bit more prestigious. Uh, but you can't go wrong with either. Both way better than an LLC. We're going to talk about these top four benefits. The last two, I just want you to be aware of them, that there are ways for you, even as a new corporate entity now, to secure business funding, maybe to pour into marketing to grow your real estate business. Uh, and there are ways to do retirement savings through a vehicle called a solo 401k. All right, let's get into the asset protection standpoint of this. Why is this important? Uh, did I miss a screen? Oh, no, I just put them out of order. Okay. There's a, a company in Kentucky that did a report a number of years ago that showed the top 10 reasons why real estate agents get sued. And you can see them on the screen here. You can Google this and it'll pull up the whole report, which gives you a, a lengthy paragraph or so on each of these 10 topics here. So you can read about it and just understand. The, the bad news is realtors do get sued uh, for various reasons. The good news is, you can protect your assets further by having a corporate entity. So why is it important? Well, we live in a, litig a litigious society where we can get sued for legitimate and even non-legitimate reasons, whether we're guilty or not. doesn't stop somebody from bringing a suit against you. Operating under a corporate entity helps to protect your personal assets. Both PAs and LLCs allow owners to separate and protect personal assets. How? You'll be operating under a corporate veil, which is the virtual wall between the assets of your corporate entity and your personal assets. So you want that separation between your personal and your business assets. So a lot of talk here about getting sued and why we want to protect our personal assets. The bottom line is we certainly hope you go your whole career and that never becomes an issue. Uh, I said I've incorporated about 3,500 agents. None of my clients have ever come back to me and said, dang, I got sued. I'm glad I had the corporate entity. But 
You talk to anybody out there, one of the main benefits of incorporating is that asset protection. Now, uh, this screen, it's unfortunate I can't go in presentation mode because this screen is a lot more powerful when I can do the builds, but let's walk through this. So if you can just kind of train your eye not to look at that right-hand column yet, let me lay this all out for you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through what a person's tax obligation could be if they're operating as a sole proprietor. And then we're going to look at what the potential tax savings might be if they were incorporated. So I made some assumptions here. And for argument's sake, we'll say this is a, a married female agent. Doesn't matter. The math is very similar no matter how we do it. So let's say this agent has done a net growth. So this is the 1099 that she gets from Florida Realty Investments at the end of the year. So this is after, I'm sorry, this is not, this is, she's gonna take her deductions out of that. She's gonna get her 1099, then she's gonna do her corporate deductions and then that money is gonna be on this line here. So she might've done 140,000, that's the 1099 from Florida Realty Investments and she's written down all of her deductions and now she's obligated to pay tax on $90,000. The first thing that she's gonna to have to deal with is what we call self-employment tax, which is Medicare and Social Security. Comes out to 15.3%, or in this case, $13,770. We don't pay a state income tax in Florida, yay. Um, but in this particular case, 90,000 married filing jointly, this puts her in the 22% tax bracket, so that's another $10,842 there, or a total tax bill of $24,600. So now let's leave everything the same, except the same agent now is incorporated. So before, you'll notice that whole $90,000 was on one line, uh, all as commission. Now that $90,000 is broken into two lines, salary and distributions. Distribution is profit. Why do people own companies? To earn profits. Why are profits important to us? Because we don't have to pay this 15.3% self-employment tax on it. So she's got 36,000 in salary and 54,000 in distributions or profits. This 54,000 is exempt from paying this 15.3%, which is why this number goes down from 2,600 to 1,000. This number goes down from 11,160 to 4,400, and the total bill on that one goes down from 13,770 to 5,508. This part stays the same, but her total tax bill is reduced now from 24,6 to 16,350, or a total savings of 8,262 dollars. So I do these classes all the time. Only a percentage of people come to them and actually incorporate. That's fine. So most of you won't incorporate today, but you'll be thinking about this topic down the road. And when you think about this topic down the road, just remember this. This number is pretty close to 10% of this number. So down the road, if it's three, six, nine months from now, and you're thinking, what did that guy say? Well, number one, Ryan's recording this, so you can come back and watch it anytime. But number two, just know it's about 10%, give or take. Depends on a lot of variables, which you and your accountant will decide, but rule of thumb, you can figure that out. Another thing I like to point out on this screen is, let's do this math. If she earned 90 in this scenario, and she paid 24.6, that means she earned about 6,600 net, 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 after everything. 6,600 divided by 12 is about $5,500 a month. So she's saving more than a month's worth of work. And actually, I've done the math. It's 50 days. So we're recording this on July 10th. So there's 21 days left here, 30 days, almost till the end of August. Every single thing that you do because you're not incorporated is merely to pay the extra money you're paying in self-employment taxes because you're not incorporated. So it is a substantial savings. This topic, nobody contests whether it's a good idea or not to incorporate. The only pushback I ever get from associates is telling me, my accountant said it's not worth doing unless I'm making 85,000 or 50,000 or 70,000 or whatever the number is. 
I take them on because I say no. If if this number is roughly 10% of that number, even if you're earning $20,000 a year, you're going to save close to $2,000 a year. It's only going to cost you a few hundred to get this done and a couple hundred every year to maintain it. It's going to be well worth it. Not even talking about the asset protection part, right? So if you're like, I'm, I'm not uh, working the business right now, but I'll get a deal or a referral once in a while. So something falls on my lap, I do it. But you know what? I'm rusty. So because I don't do deals all the time. So if you're only doing a couple of deals a year or you're new, that asset protection part of it is as important, if not more important than the tax savings. But at any dollar amount, really, the tax savings are, are worth it. Now, there's a lot of discussion over how do you figure out how much to take in salary and how much to pay yourself as a distribution. There's a couple of schools of thought out there. So when I started this, I was introduced to this gentleman, not personally, but to follow him. There's a gentleman by the name of Sandy Botkin. If you read some of these bullet points, he's a very well-credentialed individual. And he wrote a book called Lower Your Taxes Big Time. I have a couple versions of this book. He updates it every uh, two years or so. The current year is out now. He talks in his book, I'm going to direct your eye to that uh, one, two, three, fourth bullet down. In Sandy's book, he's got an entire chapter devoted to exactly what we're talking about today, how to eliminate up to 60% of your Social Security and Medicare tax with an S corporation. That is exactly what we're talking about today. Now, Sandy goes on to say a 40 to a 60% distribution is okay. I'm going to jump back a screen. You'll notice I took a 60% distribution. So the higher this number is, the higher this number is, and the lower this number is going to be. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is you're going to want to talk to your tax advisor uh, to see what is best for you. Some say 60-40, some say 50-50, 40-60, but that's kind of the sweet spot. But this is just this Math was just an example. You're going to decide how much it comes out to for you with your particular tax advisor. All right. So we talked about asset protection. We talked about tax savings. Another benefit of incorporating is additional credibility. Only about 12 to 15% of Florida realtors are incorporated. 85 to 88% of Florida realtors not incorporated. So if you show up, at a listing presentation, if you hand the sellers, the prospective sellers, your business card, and it has a PA on it, you're already different than 85% of the people you may be competing with. So if it were me, I would always take half a second to explain what that PA is, right? Which shows them you understand how to hold on to as much money as you can. They're probably interested in that. You understand how to protect yourself against things that may happen in the industry against the uh, lawsuits or frivolous lawsuits. So they might be interested in talking more with someone who understands those concepts, right? So it will add to your credibility because the vast majority of agents don't have a PA or an LLC. And the last benefit we're going to talk about here is reducing your risk of an IRS audit. Now this one, there's some different schools of thought on this one too. Do you actually reduce your risk? Do you increase your risk? I don't know. By the way, I'm not a CPA. So this, I just go by the Wall Street Journal did a report a number of years ago. Uh, I have the link somewhere in my emails if anybody wants it. They said, they said it the opposite. I say you're 10 times less likely to get audited if you have an S corporation. They said it the opposite. They said, the way you're doing your taxes now, filling out a 1040 and itemizing your deduction, your business deductions on a schedule C, that way of doing it is 10 times more likely to be audited than if you had an escort. And a couple of reasons for that are, uh, number one, the IRS knows that those Schedule Cs have the highest uh, percentage of illegal claims on it, so they tend to look at them a little bit more closely. The other reason is business auditors, you might be doing 250000 in real estate, uh, and that's a great year in my opinion. But to a business auditor for the IRS, $250,000 business is a little bit smaller potato, so they just tend to look at them less. Now, 
We know audits are down across the board. There's some talk about beefing up the IRS, so they might be increasing that. But this is a fact as written by the Wall Street Journal a few years back. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. I just want to check my time. Okay, we're doing great on time. Uh, let's talk about the process where if you were going to incorporate, what are the steps, what are the some of DBPR rules, and what are the things you really should do after you incorporate to make sure everything is buttoned up. So I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that only about 15% of Florida realtors are incorporated. How come? Clarity is a big issue. I bet almost everybody here today came to this call with some level of understanding this topic. But hopefully we're adding clarity. Hopefully we've already added clarity. And certainly on the next two or three screens, we're going to add a lot more clarity so you truly understand what's involved here. So clarity and education is number one. Number two, cost. This can be an expensive proposition, right? I have a friend, he's an attorney over in Fort Myers. He charges four figures to do this, right? Uh, and then complexity. It's not really complexity. It's perceived complexity. Sometimes realtors think, oh my goodness, is this is this a big deal? Am I going to need bank statements, income tax returns? No, we boiled it down to a, a simple form that I'll uh, I'll share with you in a little while. So let's talk about some of those DBPR rules now. And I'm just going to go through them kind of quickly. There's there's four or five of them that we need to just keep in mind as we incorporate. The first thing is spelled out in the statute, 475161. You can have a corporate entity, a PA or an LLC, but it must be your name that's on your license. So I'm Stephen M. Dahlia, PA. That's my only choice. I can't be Dahlia Dream Homes, LLC. I can't be anything other than Stephen M. Dahlia, PA. Same for you. So now let me contradict that with one exception. The only play you have in the naming of your corporate entity as a Florida licensed realtor is messing around with your middle name. So if you have your full middle name on your license and you want to either drop it or go to your middle initial or vice versa or any combination of middle names, you can do that as long as nobody else has that name that you're looking for. Speaking of naming conflicts, by the way, I've been doing this 10 years, 3,500 agents. I've only had about four uh, naming conflicts where people got stymied. We usually get around with that middle name rule there. Uh, and if you are changing your middle name, middle initial, I have a form that goes along to the document that, I'm sorry, it's not a form, it's a letter template that I've created that I give you that goes along with the form you have to send to DBPR where we update your license, tell them to add a PA or an LLC, and oh, by the way, drop my full middle name and just go with my middle initial. So we've sorted that out for you. So DBPR rules must be your name. I alluded to this earlier. You must be the 100% owner of it all of the time. Second biggest question I get is from married couples who work as a team. Can we create one entity and both of us are employed by it? No. Each individual licensee has to have their own entity, or if Florida Realty Investment it agrees, you can have uh, one spouse can form the entity, and the other spouse we can run all the business through that entity. That's up to your brokerage to decide. Um, so your name only, 100% owned by you. You can only do real estate business for which you are licensed. Right? There's only a handful of things you can do as a Florida real estate licensee. So you have a property management business, and some of you may. Um, that money technically can't go into your real estate PA or LLC. You do appraisals on the side, you sell t-shirts, you own properties as an investor. None of that money can flow into your corporate PA entity. This entity is only to be used for the activities that you engage in with your real estate license. So that's three. Number four is the money. The only money that can come through that PA or LLC for your real estate license is money that's paid to you by Florida Realty Investments uh, for doing real estate license activities. So um, let's see, were those the, I thought there was one more. I always miss one. Oh, last one. 
a lot of realtors are investors and they have multiple LLCs for their investment properties. They may have a main holding LLC for all of those other LLCs. They ask, can I put this PA under my holding company LLC or can I put this PA or LLC and have it hold my other entities? The answer is no. This entity exists out here on an island. It's in your name. It's 100% owned by you. It can only do real estate and it can't own or be owned by anything else. I probably should create a page for that. That's a lot. Um, okay, so I know I threw a lot at you there, so I'll give you my information again at the end for questions. All right, here are all the steps of incorporating. We do all of these for you if you decide to incorporate with us. The first thing we do is the corporate name search. If there is a conflict, we come back to you with that whole middle name discussion. And in almost all cases, we're able to, uh, to secure the entity with that middle name change. We handle the electronic filing to the Secretary of State I provide 100% accuracy guarantee, and I just had to make good on this last week. I don't know what happened. I transcribed an apartment number, and I got it wrong. So I paid the state to go amend that document, which I made a mistake on. So we have 100% accuracy guarantee. We submit to the state, and then we wait for your articles of uh, formation or organization to be delivered, and then we check those for completeness and accuracy, and we grab those for you. We obtain your federal tax ID number or your EIN, and we handle this next bullet here, IRS Form 2553. That's where we tell the IRS we want to be taxed as an S-Corp. That's the most important piece of this whole puzzle because without that, as a, as a PA, you're going to be a C-Corp and you're going to pay that double taxation. If you choose to be an LLC, your default status is a, a, a sole proprietor, and you're going to pay tax on the whole, you know, the whole earnings instead of carving out that 64. Um, we also do the uh, the DBPR RE16, and if there is a middle name or middle initial change, we give you the letter template to send along with that, and then they make the change. You can call me anytime with questions, and I've got a list of uh, banking promotions. There's a lot of banks out there that are really aggressive in trying to get business accounts opened. So if you form a PA or an LLC for your real estate license, you want to have a, a business checking account. And there's a lot of banks out there that are providing offers for uh, opening a business checking account. I'm going to let you look at this while I take a sip. Now, I grabbed this a few months ago, so this is not up to date. I'll send you the link. you got to check it. Make sure there's something that works for you. There's terms on all of these, but the bottom line is you've got a very good chance of getting more money back from your bank than it's going to cost you to incorporate. So make sure you check for that. All right. Now, if anybody wants more information, is thinking about incorporating, you want to incorporate, uh, let me show you where I'm handling that all through now. My website, you've seen the, uh, the logo on every screen I've done is agentincorporations.com. And if you're looking at a, on a desktop, you'll see over to the right, there's Florida Realtor PA and LLC. All you need to do is click on that. If you're looking at a mobile, they're gonna be down on the bottom. Um, so I just, uh, I just increased the size. So you're just gonna uh, pick which one you want, and then you're gonna click on one. And when you come to this, it's going to show you, I just launched this website. I've taken a couple orders on it. I haven't really promoted it yet. But I used to only provide one price. And sometimes realtors have come to me and asked me if I offer uh, multiple payments. And I never did. Uh, so now I am. So you can choose a one, a two, or a three payment plan. And it's the same thing. The prices are a little different on an LLC because an LLC, the state filing fee, where is it here? Uh, see this, the state filing fee for a PA is 70. On an LLC, it's 125. So the prices are all, the, the top price is $55 more. But whenever anybody attends my class like this and you take the time out of your day, I like to offer a special incentive. So I have created a couple of coupon codes specifically for Florida, Florida Realty Investment 
Investments Associates to say thank you for coming to this class today to get a little bit more educated on the topic. I wanted one coupon code, but the way my software works, I had to create a separate coupon code for a PA and for an LLC. I'll put these up at, again at the end, but they're going to take $50 off that one payment pricing. I can't offer it on the two or three payment plan, but if it's something you want to do and you want to take the one payment, you can take $50 off, which is my thank you for coming to today's class. I'll put those up again on my last screen, which is I've only got two more slides. This slide is my most important slide of the entire presentation. This slide, I'm going to tell you all the steps that need to be completed, and I'm going to give you an idea of timing. A lot of times, realtor come to, realtors will come to my class and they won't incorporate, but they'll call me three months later because they have a deal closing in two weeks and they want to get it done. So let's walk through the timeline here so you understand. So if that's you, you don't leave yourself short on timing if and when that comes. So the first thing we do is we submit your order to the state and then we have to wait on them for them to make it live. And we can't do anything until it's live. Trust me, I tried, blew up in my face every time. Now, right now, the state is running a couple of business days. Now, with the 4th of July last week, they lost a day or two, but they, after a holiday, they'll usually close the gap. So budget, just a few business days, two or three usually. Uh, then once your entity is live, the first thing we do, or if you're doing this on your own or through your own CPA or attorney, the first thing that you want to get done is your tax ID number, your EIN. Once you have your EIN, we do this online and we get it in a matter of minutes. So once you are live with the state and you have your EIN, you can go open a business checking account. So also at the same time, once this is live, we, if we're handling it, we spring into action and we do the DBPR RE16 form. Now this one, you have to understand the timing on this. Unfortunately, the only way you can get this processed with the state is to have a physical paper form and a physical check or money order and mail it snail mail to Tallahassee. Now, with your mail time and their processing time. It used to be about two weeks. Post COVID, it's three to four weeks. And there's nothing we can do about that except maybe send this overnight to them. But there's no way, even with this too, there's no way to get expedited filing. There's no way to get expedited filing here. Just get it to them faster, right? It's gonna take two to maybe four weeks. So again, you have a deal coming, make sure you don't wait too long because. There's nothing I can do about it. I've had clients over the years yell at me because either the state or DBPR was not moving too fast. I cannot control any of that. The most important part of my most important slide is right here. We do the form 2553, which again is you telling the IRS you want them to tax your new entity as an escort. That's where a lot of your tax savings come from. Pre-COVID, this would take exactly 60 days to get done. You'd mail it on July 10th, and on, uh, on September 10th, you'd get a letter in the mail from the IRS saying, congratulations, you're now an escort. Post-COVID, I've seen it take as long as six months, but they're closing that gap. It's getting back closer to the two months. This is not as critical as this, because this only comes into play when you file your taxes next year but nonetheless we get it out asap and you want to keep your eyes peeled on that we already talked about this and then this is also important too once this is done here you want to update your w9 with florida realty investments because they can't pay you uh, they won't pay you in the name of your new entity unless this is filed and they can't pay you in the name of your new entity until this is updated with the state dbpr on myfloridalicense.com so that's the timing uh bottom line is this is the most critical so you know if you budget about a month you put it in here you wait a few days you wait a few weeks so i would say if you've got a deal coming you always want to be about a month ahead of time when you really decide to do this if you decide to wait until you have a deal coming and then this is my last slide, which is just my 
contact information again and those two coupon codes, uh, which they are expiring on Sunday night. So I always leave it open for a few days to give you a chance to get questions answered, decide if it's something you want to do. But by all means, if you want to do it, take advantage of those coupon codes. The timing doesn't work for you. No worries. I'm here anytime you might have any questions. So speaking of questions, uh, Ryan, I'm going to uh, throw it back to you and the group and see if there's any questions that anyone has for me. All right, we had, I saw some in the chat, but I wanted to ask you, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, so if I've done, let's say we're doing that $90,000 this year that the, your example did, and she's done 60,000 before she gets this done this year. So she's, she'll file 60 as a sole proprietor and 30 as a, um, as an LLC or PA. That, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times my busiest day of the year could be April 14th and December 30th, where everybody wants to get this done before they do their taxes or before the end of the year. And uh, they can't do it. You can only enjoy the benefits of it from the date it's filed going forward. Okay. Let me uh, let me just take that. You reminded me of something I didn't address in this uh, presentation, Ryan. So I told you all the good things about this. There's there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. You're forming an actual corporation, and hope you guys can't hear the lawnmower here. Uh, there's a couple of responsibilities that you have to get all of these benefits that we talked about, and those responsibilities are <clears throat> every year the state of Florida. I'm going to stop sharing because I have a friend who likes to harass me about the Yankees doing so bad. Um, every year, just to see if I can open my thing. Okay. Every year, the state of Florida imposes a tax on business owners, and it says that you have to pay what they call an annual report fee before May 1st of the year after you incorporate. So if you incorporate now or any time between now and the end of the year, you don't pay it this year. But by May 1st of next year, a PA has to pay $150 a year, and an LLC has to pay $138.75 a year. And that's just for the privilege of keeping your entity open and operating from year to year. So it's just a, a state of Florida tax for keeping your business open every year. And the other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to talk to your accountant or whoever does your taxes, and you're gonna to need to file a corporate income tax return. So that's gonna cost you a few hundred dollars. The annual report's gonna cost you about 150. So as you're doing your, does this make financial sense for me? I just wanted you to be aware that those are some of the ongoing uh, costs that you will incur. Okay, Rakesh has a hand up. Hey, Steve, uh, thanks uh, for the presentation. I think great information. Um, uh, one question uh, about salary and distribution. Is there any guideline how much you can put toward the salary, how much you can put toward the distribution? Uh, is there a minimum you have yes. to have a uh, salary? No. Um, I mean, you know, that, that slide that I talked about with Sandy Botkin, he kind of says that, uh, oh, you think it's me? Yeah, I think I, I, I think, think just because the only time it's not there is when you're talking. So I think it's, it's something to do with your system. Let me, let me get rid of this. Let me pull this out. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. But, Did the echo still go no. All right. no, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't right. think Sorry. everybody's yeah. muted, Ryan. It's just, no, it's only when everybody but Steve talks. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I would refer back and I can send you that screen, but that, you know, there's no exact formula to that. There's um, the, the, the example I gave you with Sandy Botkin where he says 40 to 60%. By the way, I recommend everybody go get that book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. It's like 15 or maybe on the high side, $20 on Amazon, and it'll save you a lot more than that in taxes. So no, there's no hard set rule. Like I told you, I'm not active. A couple of years ago, I uh, 
I had one deal, I got a $10,000 commission, and that was my only deal for the year. So an accounting company that I've been working with through this, they said, take the whole thing as a distribution. At $10,000, nobody's going to bother you. So I'm not giving you financial advice here, but that's what I did. It was a few years ago. I haven't heard anything about it. So no, there's no hard and fast rule on it. But I can tell you this. The IRS is looking more closely at those. So if you're doing 90000 you're taking the whole amount as a distribution, you're probably going to get called in for an audit from the IRS. So just use your, you know, use your common sense on that one. Talk to your financial advisor. But no, there's no, the, the formula is you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. So what is reasonable? I don't know. Can you look at all of the agents statewide and take the median salary for that? I don't know how the IRS handles that, but just... You know, just know that the IRS is starting to look a little more closely at that. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Look, Steve, Steve. Um, um, we have a question. The name of the book you just recommended to purchase. Lower Your Taxes Big Time. Lower Your Taxes Big Time by Sandy Botkin. B-O-T-K-I-N. By the way, I don't know if this is still the case. I'm not a member anymore, but Sandy was a partner with FAR, Florida uh, Association of Realtors. And Sandy was doing for a while their quarterly webinars on tax savings. So check out your FAR resources and see if Sandy's still around. I know he's getting older now. He may be actually retired from that. But uh, yeah, check him out. He's a great resource. Okay, Tammy, you have a question? I didn't really have a question. I put my hand back down. Okay. Is it is it me? Is it me? No, it's 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 everybody uh, except for Steve. Steve sounds great. Steve's the most important one today, so that's good. Um, all right. Any other questions for Steve? Steve, do you mind putting your information in the chat? I know. Yeah, not at all. Yep. Let me. Uh, let's see. And raise more options. Let's see. Just to chat. There should be a, on the bottom right. There's a chat thing. Yeah, I am, I am challenged on it. Oh, yes, we can. All right. Rakesh, do you have a question? Yeah, can I ask one more question? Um, so, Steve, you mentioned about uh, if you have a middle name in your license, uh, right? But you open LS, LLC or S without the middle name. Is it really the issue when you try to change that with the DDPR? Or you can still do that if they, all they need is that uh, you have LLC with the first and last name. That's fine. Um. This guy's not even my lawn. It's a property next to me. Um, so here's the thing. DBPR, they're, they're, they won't use their brain at all on your mm -hmm. RE16. They'll just see if an RE16 comes in and it's different than what the name is on your license, they'll just bounce it and tell you you've got deficiencies in that form. So it's important that if we are going to make a change to your middle name, middle initial, add, delete, go from full middle name to middle initial or vice versa, um, we have to enclose that letter template and tell them, hey, on my license, which reads like this, please be advised. I'm dropping my full middle name and I'm going with just my middle initial. Please, as per my RE16 attached, please update my license to Stephen M. Dahlia, PA. And then everything works beautifully. And I'm still looking Thank for you. that chat. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, here it is. I just I think I found it. Okay. There you go. Any other questions for Steve before he goes? Okay. I might put my Dahlia sales email address in here because I was having an issue getting one from my other email address. So there's me. I just put in the chat my name, my phone number, and my a good working email address, which is different than the one you saw on the screen, but uh, that's the one I want to give you because I think the other one's having some hiccups right now. 
All right, great. Uh, Viviana. Yeah, no, my question is because I have both entity and LLC, I have PA. Actually, my PA I will put S now. But uh, I don't know. I know he explained it, but I don't know which one is better. Do you know? LLC, PA. I'm not sure. So you have two right now? Yeah, I have uh, two houses I put in a PA, the rest I live in an LLC. So I'm so confused. My PA I'm going to change now for the S corporation, but uh, I don't know what to do, you know, like uh, if I should leave everything just in one company, all the houses, or PA is better, I don't know, I'm lost. Well, here's the thing. Huh? The PA, can you hear me? Yes. So yes. your PA should not have any properties in it. Your PA should only be for your real estate license. So if you have any homes, you know, in your PA, you need to move those out to your LLC. And you might want to consider having individual LLCs for each of your properties, because it sounds like the way you may have it now, if you have all your properties in one LLC and something happens at one of those properties, all of your uh, all of your properties could be at risk if they're all under one LLC. So what a lot of investors do is they'll have an individual LLC for each property. That's your decision on that. But with regard to your PA, that should only be for your real estate license activities, and it's not intended to hold any properties in it. Okay. Um, uh, you're muted, Vivian. Um, all right, uh, Steve, thank you very much for coming in. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions for you and people will do it, uh, be getting to you. Lots of people, uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions. And uh, I get a lot of questions about this is why I was glad that, uh, that you were able to come in today. I appreciate it. And I just put my website in the chat, agentincorporations.com. So hit the site. Oh, by the way, I didn't say this. Um, I put a chat bot on that site on the bottom and I trained it. Gave me one wrong answer the other day. I'm going to go update that. But hit my website, grill the chat bot, try to stump it. Let me know because I'm trying to make that chat bot as, uh, as bulletproof as I can in terms of answering questions about this business. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. We really appreciate you. Thank really you. It. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, well, we appreciate Steve coming in. Uh, hopefully we got rid of the echo. So um, we'll see how this goes. Um, I guess there was nothing else you guys wanted to talk about today. I was pretty sure from checking our FRI, uh, FRI agents group that there was nothing else. So we'll see you next time. Right, Daryl? Uh, Tammy. Tammy has a question. No, I was going to remind Daryl. No, I saw that. No, um, you don't need to remind Daryl of anything. I'm just teasing. What... It, what is you, you made a comment that um we didn't necessarily have to do those lock boxes so um is there advantage or disadvantage and also i did notice we can keep our supra but it's part of another um uh um, what are they called uh you're you're being solicited by uh the other associations to keep <laughs> your super with them uh i saw west volusia sent me one um i don't know if any but uh some people so do we have to join me. those do we have to join those we don't have to join their board no they're letting you just do their super if you want oh. um well so this is quite the uh this is quite the timing and the idiocy of this just for lack of a better term so i i'm 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 baffled that they would do this at this time obviously they must have done it this must have been a five-year contract with Supra or something like that, extended year contract, but they did not see this coming at the exact time that we're going through all this other stuff. Um, it's, it's the only way. I, they didn't make this decision a month ago and say, hey, let's do this um, right now. Um, I think they would have stuck with it another year. Uh, it could be argued, uh, which they're trying to argue. They're sending out pieces every day trying to, from a different um, member there, a different uh, management person at Aura. Um, to try to justify this thing and talk about how it's going to be so much better. It's going to be so much better. The fact whether it's better or not doesn't matter because it's different from every other association. And they're, oh, you'll save 50 cents a month, you know, with this, with this plan. But now I have to have the other 
$18 for Supra and $18 for this. It's ridiculous. So, uh, uh, but only if you work outside of Orange and Seminole County, in and out of Orange and Seminole County, which who doesn't sell a house in Kissimmee or Claremont or Deltona if they get the chance, right? So if you live in if you live in uh, Lake Mary, you don't sell a house in Deltona. If you live in in Orlando, you don't sell a house in Claremont. If you live in in Orlando, you don't sell a house. If you live in Lake Nona, you don't sell houses in Kissimmee or St. Cloud. It's crazy. So of course you need both, or you need neither, and you just call people for one day codes every time. What this is doing is, and this is just my opinion, and this is just me thinking about it and going through scenarios. This is making it easier for buyers to get in properties without agents because if you're just going to be calling for one day codes, I've got to find an agent who you guys are able to answer your phone all the time in case somebody wants to stop by your property, your vacant property real quick and show it. You can't, right? They'll get on an electric, electronic lockbox normally, assuming we all had the same one still. And you can add a property. How many times have you guys added a property to stuff, something they wanted to see once you meet with them and then they show you something? Oh, I didn't send this to you, but this one looks really good. And you just, you know, you, you maybe call the agent or check to see if you can just go show it real quick. And what if the agent doesn't answer their phone, but it's on electronic lockbox and it's vacant, right? So, I mean, if the listing says it's vacant on lockbox, then you go show it or you do that the same day. But what if you want to show something and you put, how often do you put together a showing routine of three homes or whatever, uh, a showing schedule of three homes for this afternoon? Cause that's when your, your client just told you they're available this afternoon. And you, it's, as long as they're on showing time, you don't have to talk to these agents and the agents don't answer their phone. How often can the listing agent really answer their phone? I mean, even a good one who's paying attention. Sometimes you're in a meeting. Sometimes they're showing homes. Sometimes they're busy. Whatever. It's it, it, it's not helpful at all. And it's going to make people have, right when you want people to have extra expenses, it's going to make them have another uh, membership. Or it's just going to make houses harder to show. Um, and I don't think it it, it doesn't increase. Uh, uh, how many of these times are you going to be sitting outside of a, of a house with a client in 100 degree weather feeling like an idiot because you can't get in the house? And the agent's not answering their phone. And you thought you had it all under control, but they've got some other lock. They're still using Supras in Orlando, right? So, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's an agent from Claremont or from Kissimmee or from Deltona who's using a, a, a Supra from their association, which you would have never even noticed before because they've got it approved for both. And you can't show a, a house that's across the street from your house. You know, Tammy, you, uh, you're in Lake Nona. You can't sell a house across the street from your house because it's got a super and you don't have super anymore. So you have to either have both or you got to be able to give. We're, we're just going to just going to make us look dumber, waste more of our time, make us have another membership, etc. And you got to get and I don't know if you saw this and they're sending out the pieces with their own Q&A's in them. And that was depressing. And they're bragging about how they're going to save you a few cents a month. And then, and then the next question says, am I going to need to have multiple memberships? And probably <laughs> if you want to do business outside of, of Orange and Seminole County, or if you, you know, depending on where your area is, well, our area is everywhere. And it's going to be more everywhere with the new rules and stuff like that. If we want to, if we want to kick some butt, right? So, um, uh, let me let me be clear about something. I see Rita's question in there. If we're going to be listing in Lake County, we need to keep our lock. You don't have to use any of these stupid lock boxes. Get a combo box. Use combo. But you, these lock boxes do nothing but keep people out. Yes, they track when people come and go. Put your stuff on. My my suggestion is to put your stuff on. Um, you showing time, and you see when people pull the directions. Now, are they going to go? Half of them are going to go. Half of them aren't going to go. But I mean, you got a pretty good idea of who's gone, who's interested in your property. If you want to do reverse uh, prospecting, you want to do anything like that, you got a pretty good idea. Is it as fancy? It's not uh, as fancy. Um, the Q and A also says to consult your broker how to secure the houses when you go pull off your Supra and exchange it for the Century. Um, how to secure it is to put another lockbox on it, uh, a cheap one from Home Depot or something. Put a lockbox on it. Uh, you probably got an old one in your garage somewhere. Throw that on it. And as far as I'm concerned, you can leave it on it. But, you know, you figure that out, do whatever you want. But it did say consult your broker for that. So that's our official stance is if you need to secure the house for the for the, you know, the day or half or half a day that you're gone to this stupid training and, and lockbox exchange that you secure it with a, a different lockbox or just leave it locked and don't let people in for a couple hours, whatever you want to do. But I suggest I, I mean, I suggest Carissa suggests that you guys Stop playing their game with these lockboxes if you don't want to. 
I, I mean, it, you know, we did business for many, many years without them. And it was fantastic. So uh, you didn't have headaches like this. And you didn't have 18 bucks a month for wasted and now 36 bucks a month that you're going to waste. So that's my opinion slash your broker's opinion to some degree. Um, Melinda bought two combo lock boxes from Amazon. Great job, Melinda. That's what I would suggest. Uh, I don't care where you buy them. That, that's fine. Uh, yeah, they've gotten actually kind of expensive at Home Depot. So um, I had to throw one on one day about a year ago and it cost me 48 bucks or something. Um, but they're nicer. They're, you know, punch code, you know, that kind of thing. So they're, they're nicer lock boxes than what we're used to. But, um, you know, we have tons of them at the office for property management. We buy them in bulk. So uh, you can get them cheaper. Um, any other questions? Um, Wilmoth. Um, yes, Ryan. Um, if an agent from another um, brokerage has a listing, so is it legal for us to have a, an open house in it? It's absolutely legal if they'll let you do it. Yes. You have to ask them. You can't just go do one. You have to ask them. It'd be pretty cool to just go camp out there. But no, you have to ask them if they want you to work one. Yes. Uh, buddy, we've got uh, our own brokerage has, uh, we can't get people to work them sometimes. We've been putting them on the uh, FRI agents page and, and not getting that great of a response. So yeah, it's great that people want to work open houses. Please do. And if agents, if a Keller Williams agent has a listing that you want to work their open house, please do. You have to ask them. And, Thank and you. They may let you because they don't want to do it either. Um, or maybe they're out of town or whatever, you know. Um, Tammy, did you have a question? Are the super lock boxes ours or would you have to trade them in? You're going to have to trade them in, I, I think, because they're not going to work. Um, but, but if we stayed on Supra with the other boards, I want I, I don't guess know. they're not. Contact, I guess they're... contact the other board. I got, a, I got one. Did you get the one from West Volusia? It was, there were several on the email. Okay. There, yeah. Okay. So, well, West Volusia sent them out. They're, they're trying to recruit you to use theirs. It's the same price and everything. It's, you just keep your subscription, move it over to them somehow. That There was a process for it. But um, I don't know if you use the same boxes or if you have to exchange them for their boxes. But they, I mean, they want your business. So, they were offering to do whatever. Uh, but I think you just move your subscription maybe. So, I hope you guys saw the dates on there. Your subscription is going to run out August 29th. You'll have access to your boxes until September 6th. Um, what a pain. We have to call for commission and we have to call for a lockbox code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more communication. If you have a listing now, you actually have to, to answer your phone and, and all that. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the, the far uh, thing yesterday. Um, there's, there's so much stuff on these. Just, just wait till things shake out. They still don't know. Uh, they were pumping up their concessions box. That's going to be a real thing. You're going to offer concessions in there. They are, of course, negotiable. You cannot say that this is for your buyer brokerage. You cannot mention uh, buyers or broker, uh, buyer brokerage agreements or anything like that. Buyers, agents, buyer brokers. You can't mention anything like that anywhere in the listing. Um, and it can't be just for that. Even if they call, say, yo, well, that's 3%. We're offering concession, but that's for your commission. If they're paying your commission, we're not doing it. Can't be contingent on that at all. Um, you got to figure that out. Um, any other questions? Um, is this a uh, bad business and very stupid by aura? I think so. Yes. If that was a question, it seemed like a lot of people have that, uh, just when you love and you're loving your NAR and your, and your local board, they go and make things better. Um, what can, what can we do to make things easier for you guys? But they do have a cutest pet thing going on right now. So contact them if you have a cute pet and they have some kind of contest for that. Um, any other questions? One question, Ryan. Yes, Melvis. Uh, going back to the LLC, when an agent has um, their license registered under the LLC um, and they take up on listings, um, the listing agreement is, of course, under Florida Realty Investments. I, I normally put in, you know, Florida Realty Investments slash Melvis Martinez. So if I have an LLC, would it be now Malvis M. Martinez LLC? The only thing that matters is Florida Realty Investments and you don't put our LLC. So no, that's fine. Oh. You do business as your, yourself. You don't have to identify yourself every time you call 
a listing agent to get into their house. You don't have to say this is Malvis Martinez LLC. You can just say this is Malvis Martinez. So no, no, you don't. You're still you're doing business as yourself. You don't have to mention LLC. We get checks made up of Florida Realty Investments. Doesn't say LLC, and we put it into our LLC account. Perfectly fine. It's a business. We're doing business as that, and that's how you do business as Malvis Martinez. Um, okay. Checks will from us will say that because that's important to us from the accounting standpoint. Thank but you. on on paperwork and stuff, you're you're still Malvis Martinez. Doesn't matter. In fact, when you sign stuff, you're still Malvis Martinez. It's signer for Malvis Martinez LLC. You're not. You don't sign as Malvis Martinez LLC because that's not correct. Gonna you know, the reason why I ask is because I've seen some listings on the MLS that say, you know, uh, Rosa Lopez LLC. Yeah, you're you're going to say that. Yours are going to say that, too, because you're going to change it with um, the MLS. I, I see a lot of those. We have agents who do that. All right. Um, next is Tammy. Um, how would we, I handle this? So I have an agent that referred me a client. She's in Ohio. So on the commission disbursement, would I pay my part to me, you guys, would I put her amount that's going to be mailed to Ohio in with FRI or would I put it to her broker in Ohio, her, her part, her referral fee? Just, just her broker separate from ours. You just put on okay. your CBA you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just put our 175 or 350, whichever you're And on. then her broker? Mm -hmm. And then her okay. broker, 25% of the gross commission. So okay. if you pay the 175, so this is how this works. If you, let's say your commission was 10,000 and you charged your client the 175, that's separate. She gets 2,500, assuming it's 25%. Okay, she gets 25, you get 75, and we get our 175, right? If you take it out of the um, 10,000, you didn't charge your client, you're just gonna pay the 175 for them. She still gets 2,500. And the 175 comes out of your part. Okay. okay. We've had people dispute that kind of stuff before. Um, over 35 bucks, yes. Um, so it happens. Um, or how much ever that is. Okay, uh, John. John, if you're trying to talk, you're on mute. All right, let's go to Ehab. Ehab. Hi, um, I have a question. If a listing on MLS uh, offering 3% buyer's commission or two and a half or whatever, um, and the closing comes after August 17, uh, how would it work with the new laws? If you're already under contract, it doesn't matter. Okay. So like before August 17, before before whenever the switch takes place i think they're removing the compensation on august 6th i think they said so if you're or no that might be not be that might not be the right date sometime in early august they're removing the compensation field so uh, that was on the thing yesterday so if it's under contract before they remove the compensation field you're perfectly mm -hmm. fine so when you guys are writing these contracts take a screenshot of the compensation field take a picture of it take whatever if you're not if you don't know a screenshot take a picture of it i would just print the uh, broker synopsis and attach it to the offer, do whatever you want to do with it, but make sure that it's, it's well verified that you were offered two and a half or 3% or whatever you were offered on that date. Uh, beyond that, what they said yesterday in the town hall thing was to get the send a commission agreement with it, or they even said to put it in the contract, which I was surprised to hear, but they said okay. to put it in the contract. Okay. Thank you. All right, man. Uh, John, I heard you you working up there again. Yeah, uh, sorry, Ryan. My internet connection keeps uh, cutting out, and uh, I know you've answered this question. I know we have to turn in our, <clears throat> our lock boxes. I have a longtime client and and other people uh, that you've mentioned uh, where I'm keyed for about five different counties or more, including New Smyrna Beach, where I'm currently showing this long-time investor homes, uh, you know, quarter million dollars in, in, in that range. Uh, do I, if I've turned in my lock boxes, do I have to keep my uh, super uh, payments up in order to be able to show those 
houses on the reciprocity. Yes, sir. If you want your E key to work, yes, you're going to keep paying Supra, which means okay. you're going to have to move it. Assuming you're an Aura member, you're going to have to move it to a neighboring association. Don't worry about which neighboring association, any of them, because everybody else is on Supra. Okay. Okay, good. Yes. And, and I have, uh, um, I have keyed in all of the neighboring counties. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. So uh, I, I run, or interestingly, coincidentally, I guess the right word is, we are members of every association up and down the East Coast from Jacksonville to Miami, except for Flagler and Indian River. And those are the other two century, the only other two century uh, lockbox associations in the state. So we have had no ex exposure to century. Um, I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure it's a great company, probably better, but it's it's there's it's just a stupid timing and and a stupid thing to go by yourself everybody needs to be on the same or you know most people need to be on the same kind of thing um sandy you're muted if you're talking all right we'll figure that out uh any other questions Nothing. All right. Um, she cannot unmute. All right. Well, nice talking to you, Sandy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know. You can, well, you can write, go ahead and write it in the chat. Um, Jika, the problem is when you want to show they have an electric lockbox and you have to ask the listing for access or just sign up. Yes, that's correct. And are you going to need to do both to be really, are you going to need to have both Sentry and Supra to be very efficient or more efficient? Yes. Are you going to have to get everybody to, uh, to, do you still have to get everyone's cross authorization to show outside of your area? Yes. Outside of your association? Yes. Um, if you list in Lake County, you need to keep the current lockbox. Sure. Yes. There's no reason to change. Um, oh it, no! If it's an if it's a aura, if your association's aura, that's where you got the lockbox, and you do, you need to change it. Doesn't matter where it is. So yes, all the local Lake County agents are not going to have Sentry, and they're just going to have to call you. That's why it's a pain. Um, Sandy, you, you write it. Oh, here you go. So if I have Super with Space Coast, I don't have to worry about using Super in another association. Um, not in uh, Oscar or anything else. But who knows how many of those are aura agents who have listings in Kissimmee that are going to have sentry boxes. So wherever you go, and there's going to be some who are going to list in Space Coast, in the Space Coast area, which is Brevard County, they're going to list in, in your home county there, and they're going to be Orlando agents, as you know, some do, and they're going to have sentry boxes right next to your, right next door to your super box. So you're going to have to get them to uh, give you a one day code. How do you know, is a good question that I just thought of. How do I know if I have a list, of, I've got three showings, how do I know that one of them is, let's say I'm in Kissimmee, how do I know if one of them is an aura box that I'm gonna have to, I'm not gonna have my super keys not gonna work for, and or vice versa, I'm in Orlando, how do I know that a Kissimmee agent doesn't have a listing, one of my three? Um, uh, you can look these agents up, you're gonna have to call everybody probably, and say, is it on super or century? And how much commission are you offering? Um, all right. Wouldn't they put that in the showing time button when they hit? The, you'd have everybody hit showing time, and you put all that in your showing okay, time. That you can put in the realtor remarks too. You can put. Yeah. You can put. You know, sentry box. It will. Jika says it will show on MLS according to probably Aura. Oh yeah, I think there's a spot we can check what kind of lock box is on there. It, it's got yeah there what there is i, I think. think there is there always has been hasn't there now that i think about it I think there always has been um i just didn't know why they would have that um but it makes sense rita um my question that's uh, not related to the lock boxes um i had a client whose listing is here in orlando i've listed it and they wanted to move down to naples i tried to refer them out and they didn't like the agent so they said listen we found our home with a new builder with the builder just represent us and give us credit back on the commission. So I said, of course. So um, the builder will not pay a credit to the buyer from the commission. 
So will can I submit the CDA for Florida Realty Investments to split the commission or no? Why do you mean the builder won't? The builder, Is it because I, of their financing or? No, the builder, um, I got an email from them saying we do not allow buyer, I'm going to, per the commission okay. agreement you sign with the builder, they do not allow the buyer to get any credits from the commission at closing. Okay, that's fine. So we'll pay you the full commission and you're going to write it off your taxes. You're going to write them a check back and write it off your taxes. Okay. Or, or we can write it from your commission. We'll, we'll do it from your commission. You can so we'll submit the check we'll, to you. We'll, you yeah, we'll write them a check after. So let's say your commission is 20,000. You want to give them 12,000 back. We'll write them a check for 12 and write you a check for eight. Okay, perfect. So just, just have the check mailed to you then. Just Yes, and just make sure Michaela understands that when, when that gets done. Just write it in the commission notes there and maybe even send Michaela an email. Of course, thank you. All right. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand again. I'm trying to mute. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, uh, Sandy, did you have anything else besides that? So the answer to answer, so I have Supra Space Coast. I don't have to worry about using Supra in another association. Anywhere that has Supra, if you go to Kissimmee to show a house, most of them are going to have Supra. If you go to, uh, well, you probably won't go as far as Lake, but if you go to Volusia, you probably go to Volusia, they're going to have uh, Supra. Everybody else is going to have Supra, except for Indian River, which is your neighbor. They're going to have something else. Oh, you're unmuted. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, good. Um, any other questions or comments before we go? Going once. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, great thing. Uh, next week, we should have our attorney on to discuss all of the latest forms. Um, if all the latest forms are out, we will have him on to discuss those. And he's an amazing attorney. Uh, Dan Bill is on. He handles this is what he does is freck and all this stuff all the time. So um, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. Keep up the good work. Everybody's doing great. Bye, guys. Thank you, Ryan. <clears throat> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.